In an era when social media is overrun with images and videos of empty shelves from all over the country, one of the most renowned analysts on Wall Street, the head commodity strategist at Goldman Sachs, claims that the severe shortages that the world's commodity markets are currently experiencing are simply unprecedented. I've been doing this for 30 years, and I've never seen markets like this," Jeffrey Curry said in a recent interview with Bloomberg TV, revealing that the physical conditions of the world's markets are extremely tight. A molecular crisis has occurred. We are completely out of everything, including oil, gas, coal, copper, and aluminum. The market's severe backwardation which appears as falling prices on the futures curve but actually indicates that people are removing goods from inventories was emphasized by the strategist. Even while prices are falling out on the futures market, commodities are currently so undersupplied that prices have been rapidly rising, which is causing a global halt in production. As a result, Global merchants are currently required to pay premium prices to assure urgent supply. At this point, the scarcity of almost everything has resulted in unprecedented price hikes everywhere, based on the costs of 23 various energy supplies tracked by Bloomberg's Bloomberg Commodity Smart Index, Meadows and Crops the highest level of oil prices since 2014, with a benchmark Brent crude oil going as high as $94 today, are what's fueling this remarkable spike and guaranteeing even more misery at the pump. According to Bloomberg, all six of the key industrial metals traded on the global metal exchange market have had sharp price increases in the previous month. Diesel prices have recently experienced their biggest spike since 2008. The vast majority of U.S. firms are being negatively impacted by all of this confusion. A report published this week by Goldman Sachs found that 97% of U.S.-based businesses are reporting operational issues, given the perfect storm afflicting their operations in addition to paying higher prices for commodities and raw materials. According to the survey, 89% of business owners think that labor shortages are having an effect on their bottom line. 76% of respondents indicated that increasing costs have a negative influence on their financial health, and about 84% have been dealing with inflation and widespread price hikes. In the meantime, a third of U.S. businesses either scaled back or closed due to a lack of materials and parts. Jessica Johnson emphasized that many U.S. firms are on the verge of financial collapse due to the health crisis' ongoing effects. She claimed that as the start of the viral outbreak's secondary anniversary draws near, it is abundantly obvious that small company owners across the nation are struggling to overcome more obstacles than ever. Thousands of business owners from 48 states participated in the Goldman Sachs poll, which was conducted from January 10 to January 13. The report also covered supply chain patterns and slowdowns, which are all exerting pressure on all U.S. businesses sectors. 68% of respondents expressed concern about continued supply chain problems, and 69% claimed that recent disruptions have hurt their company's sales. The authors of the Goldman Research responded by stating that the continuous supply chain disaster is exceedingly concerning for the future of the global economy. Separately, According to Goldman analysts, 66% of small business owners believe they have issues with suppliers who favor big enterprises over small ones. Because of this, the majority of small business owners are skeptical 
that relief will arrive very soon. Only 13 believe that supply chain disruptions will end over the next six months. Joe Wall, National Director of Goldman Sachs, noted in a statement that this new data plainly illustrates that the economic headwinds produced by the health issue are greater than ever and keep hitting the main street hardest. Overall, more than 90% of research participants, including board members and executives from the supply chain and procurement departments, report a significant increase in raw material prices over the previous year. Due to the lowest availability of raw materials, at least 45% of these businesses have lately been unable to operate at full capacity. Likat, a managing director at Inverco, stated in a letter on the most recent disruptions that in the short term, businesses cannot escape rising prices and that it is impossible to win the global market. Securing supply is the most crucial thing firms can do right now to preserve delivery capacity. Almost 76% of respondents predict that the cost of raw materials will increase significantly this year. Aluminum prices have increased 48 over the past year, matching those of iron, steel, and polymers. Paper grew by 40%. Copper by 36%, chemicals by 27%, electricity by 27%, and oil costs by 23%. Small firms are at risk of going out of businesses as a result of shortages and price increases. Hundreds of thousands of U.S. small firms could go out of business within the next six months. Large manufacturers have been negatively impacted by the lack of metal parts and semiconductors. The global semiconductor shortage will cost the auto sector $210 billion this year, according to one prediction by the U.S.-based consultancy firm Alex Partners. Ford said last week that its production levels are being affected by the worsening scarcity causing it to increase production in various sites across the U.S., Canada, and Mexico. Ford joins a host of other automakers and tech firms, such as Tesla, Apple, and Sony, who are dealing with the similar problems. However, the shortage of chips has affected a broad range of industries, leading to backlogs in orders for goods for consumer electronics and home appliances. Additionally, the construction industry is suffering from the shortage of raw materials. Basic building supplies like plywood, lumber, and external and interior cladding are difficult for building suppliers to get, which causes significant delays that double project timelines. According to Carl Taylor, the delays were brought on by increasing demand brought on by record high residential building consents, a lack of manpower available to produce the materials, and a lack of the resources required to construct specific building items. He declared, plain and simple, we can't work if we can't acquire the resources. Home builders are also having trouble locating steel and copper which is making it even harder to build the 5.24 million homes that are required to satisfy this year's expected demand. More than 90% of builders reported delays and material shortages in 2021, according to the National Association of Home Builders. When inventory is low, the market becomes more competitive, leading to bidding wars that drive up house prices. Redfin Chief Economist Daryl Fairweather told Insider. However, that isn't the only distortion brought on by the supply and demand gap that markets and sectors have been dealing with. Yasi Shafi, a professor of engineering systems, predicts 
that Medicaid shortages and global supply networks will take a long time to settle. According to the expert, the current shortages are a reflection of our larger market forces that are preparing for a serious recession. According to Shafi, the bulwark effect, a well-known supply chain phenomena, is a crucial driving force. Today's goods manufacturers frequently over-order because they believe that just a portion of their orders will be completed, despite the fact that they are struggling to keep up with demand and unrelenting supply uncertainty. Additionally, they count on the demand staying the same or increasing. The inflated order is passed on to a tier 1 supplier by the next step in the supply chain, who may be a parts wholesaler. The tier 1 provider operates in a similar manner to all other suppliers. The order has gotten drastically out of proportion by the time it gets to the minor sub-tier suppliers at the end of the supply chain. The term phantom orders refers to orders that are significantly larger than what customers actually need. Businesses will be left with stocks of goods they can't sell and parts they can't utilize when demand slows. Smaller suppliers at the end of the supply chain that lack the financial clout to write off a sharp decline in demand and the expense of unsold inventory are particularly hurt by this. Shafi cautions that under these conditions, many firms would fail, exacerbating the recession as occurred in the global financial meltdown of 2007 and 2008. There are numerous indications that sales are already declining, recessionary factors are intensifying as inflation soars, and people's purchasing power declines, and the impending increase in interest rates will hasten this downward trend even further. Additionally, a great deal of historical evidence suggests that the bullwhip impact alters market sentiment and has the potential to quickly trigger a meltdown. This basically indicates that businesses should be cautious about the root causes of the shortages created by the bullwhip effect because markets can respond at any time and withdraw support. Example, company owners should begin preparing for the worst and customers should be prepared for a very tumultuous year. This is 360 Economist YouTube channel. Don't forget to support us by hitting the like, share, and subscribe button.